protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Away from the kid, into the crowd. The video quickly went viral, racking up nearly 10,000 retweets and getting picked up by other news outlets. The Washington Post reported Trump, using a thick sharpie, put his signature on the bill of the cap, then looked up and lobbed it into the crowd, nowhere near the hand that had given it to him. And BuzzFeed even claimed that the poor kid never got his hat back. But in reality, other camera angles clearly show the president and the kid were just having fun. And the boy indeed caught his hat, signed by the president of the United States. You can see the videos for yourself right now at Infowars.com. Leading a frontal... Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, the 18th of April, 2017. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, President Donald Trump signed an executive order today that recommends changes to the visa programs that bring in foreign workers to the United States. The president's goal is to encourage the hiring of Americans first. Meanwhile, Facebook wants you to join anti-Trump demonstrations on International Workers' Day. And rumor has it that Mark Zuckerberg might be considering a run for the White House. Can you figure out what I'm going to say? Yeah, we should work on it together. Let's go get some more snacks. All right. All that plus a look at terror cells inside the U.S. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. The reason InfoWars Live has five-star ratings on major third-party sites is because I want products I'm going to use for my family. I take this. My family takes this. And then it funds the operation with the most hardcore, truthful information you're going to find anywhere. So what you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLive.com. If I ever forget to take them, like, I'll, I have a noticeable difference. I don't feel good. The nascent iodine is one of the ones that was life-changing for me. Yeah, I actually have just run out of my super female. I had a, a few bottles at my house, and I've been taking it again, uh -huh. hitting the gym once again. Mm. Very exciting, feeling yeah. great, looking good. So, And I know my hair is <laughs> luxurious once again. So, obviously, the super female is amazing. I love it. Nascent iodine is essential. Survival Shield X2, if there's one problem, Product that I would say is life changing that I would suggest it's nascent iodine survival shield x2 it's got a five star rating it's a win win infowarslife.com latest attempt to make good on his America First campaign promises, President Trump has signed an executive order today. This is being dubbed the Buy American and Hire American Order. This calls on federal agencies to recommend changes to a temporary visa program that brings foreign workers to the United States. He says that this is going to help encourage the hiring of more Americans, and it'll also create higher wages uh, for workers in the United States. Now, a lot of uh, people are kind of saying, well, this can make it a lot harder for him to follow through on that ambitious trillion-dollar infrastructure spending plan that he touted on the campaign trail. Uh, pe industry groups are saying that the president's plan would raise prices on construction materials, making it more expensive to build pipelines, bridges, highways, homes, and schools. And, of course, 
People like Mark Zuckerberg are pushing back against this because they were really counting on President Obama and his, his uh, protege, Hillary Clinton, to continue with this H-1B uh, worker visas so that they could continue importing people from other countries into the United States, suppressing wages of American workers. And so this is why we see Facebook giving its employees the okay to join anti-Trump demonstrations that are planned for International Workers' Day on May 1st. So they're saying, go ahead. You don't even have to request the day off. We just want you to get out there and protest Trump. And uh, they're also saying that if any, if any of their businesses that they have ties with contractors who will bring in people who staff janitors, drivers, and other workers who help Silicon Valley actually run, he said that they're going to punish those contractors and reevaluate their business connections with those people if they don't let their employees take the day off as well to join the demonstration. Zuckerberg says it's important not just to the engineers and H-1B holders that are traditionally thought of as the immigrants in tech, but also to the folks who are subcontracted to work side by side on those campus campuses. Of course, these are the people that help Silicon Valley run smoothly and these tech campuses Right, and that is why they are being forced out of communities like in San Francisco where they can't even afford to live there because of people like you, Mark Zuckerberg, who don't pay those workers enough to keep them there. But of course, he's saying protest away because he wants to, he was one of the biggest advocates for these H-1B visa worker programs. He wanted even more uh, visa holders to be able to come in, work for Facebook, because for some reason, he's saying that he is unable to find qualified uh, tech workers here in the United States. And many of these tech employees are saying, what the heck are you talking about? I was actually forced to train my replacement. It makes absolutely no sense. So speaking of protesting away, uh, we've got another protest coming up against Donald Trump on, uh, on May 1st. Um, but according to a prominent scholar who was recently targeted by these angry mobs of students, uh, she's saying this is a dangerous new trend. These angry mobs of U.S. students shutting down free speech. They, she says free speech is under fierce assault in the United States. This is the Manhattan Institute's Heather McDonald, and she first experienced this hostility. Uh, she was visiting the West Coast first at UCLA and then at Claremont McKenna College. Uh, protesters blocked the entrance to her speech, made it so that others weren't able to even get into the auditorium where she was speaking. They couldn't interact with her. They even tried to have her speak via a video conference, but the event was just shut down entirely over security concerns. And so we're seeing this again and again and again at college campuses across the United States, especially at UC Berkeley, where the free speech movement, the students' free speech movement actually began and now we're seeing the total opposite of that but these were protesters targeting mcdonald in response to her book the war on cops how the new attack on law and order makes everyone less safe oh my goodness so controversial how dare you stand up for cops and speak out against uh the pe how people are attacking law and order and that all of us are going to be a lot less safe when that is the case so they shut her down, accusing her of being a racist and a fascist. Makes absolutely no sense. And McDonald said the intolerance of the left is reaching new heights. Now we've got uh, black students at an absurdly ritzy college saying that objective truth is white supremacy and a myth. And this is at one of those colleges where McDonald dared to try and come give a speech. And so in response to her trying to show up at their college, they issued uh, these orders to their outgoing president of their school. Um, so this is a lengthy open letter to the school president charging that the search for objective truth is a white supremacist invention used for silencing oppressed peoples. The letter also criticizes free speech as a tool appropriated by hegemonic institutions. It's very wordy. I'm going to try and break this down for you. So this is Pomona, and it is a member of the Five School Claremont Consortium. And so they charge about $65,000 a year for tuition, fees, room, and board. So these are very privileged students at the school. Uh, but they address this 
1,053-word letter to the outgoing Pomona president, and uh, they stressed the school's commitment to free speech and academic freedom. Uh, he, he made a statement, I'm sorry, stressing that that was what the school stood for. Um, they, they stand by free speech and academic freedom in the wake of the protest, which shut down that speech by Heather McDonald. Um, she's a conservative social critic. And as we know, these leftist universities are not having any of it. They want to bash the fash by bashing in people's faces and shutting down their access to free speech and speakers that challenge their ideas. Totally crazy here. So the outgoing president's defense of free speech, they say, contained unnuanced views surrounding the academy and a belief in searching for some venerated truth. That, my friends, is white privilege, white supremacy. Um, they say historically, white supremacy has venerated the idea of objectivity but the concept of a single truth is a myth and white supremacy, imperialism, colonization, capitalism, and the United States of America are all of its progeny. The idea that the truth is an entity for which we must search in matters that endanger our abilities to exist in open spaces is an attempt to silence oppressed people. So we sh shan't dare search for the truth because in these protected, <laughs> spaces these safe spaces and open spaces you might offend people who have been historically oppressed they don't want to search for the truth what does that even mean i my brain hurts so they're saying that the only truth that we're allowed to have access to is their truth and then they're going to shut everyone else down in the name of bashing the fash they want to shut down any opposing views that makes absolutely no sense they're basically saying my truth here is the only thing that exists and matters. Um, they say that the idea that we must subject ourselves routinely to the hate speech of fascists who want for us not to exist. This lady was coming to their school to talk about the dangers of uh, all of this lashing out at law enforcement. We're seeing law enforcement actually being targeted and murdered at unprecedented rates. How dare she? So the fascists show up to shut her down. And then they sent this really, uh, this letter of demands saying that anyone that even um, sends them any threats or dare speak out against this letter that they sent, they are demanding that those students be expelled. So now you're not even allowed to question the motives of these students. Um, I just, I can't, that stuff, it just really makes me ill. And then we've got UC Davis student leaders saying that the American flag display should be optional at meetings. So this is what's going on at campuses across the United States. They are so anti-American, uh, but now this is the UC Davis student Senate. They have made it optional to display the American flag at its meetings, stirring up controversy, of course. Um, this is a bill that amends bylaws that require the United States flag to be on display at every Senate meeting of the associated students. So now these people say that the concept of United States of America and patriotism is different for every individual, so it should not be compulsory that the flag is in view at all times during Senate meetings. So that's the, that's the whole thing. What people, the very foundation of this country is under attack Nobody understands what it means. And then they would dare say that the, that the flag is just a piece of cloth. If that's the truth, why the hell does it offend you so much? So this is, this is what we're having to deal with. And of course, a speech that didn't get shut down at UC Berkeley. Very interesting here. I don't know why the uh, Antifa did not show up to shut down the former FEC chairwoman who went there to UC Berkeley to give a speech calling for regulations of political speech on the internet. Where were the, where were the bash bashers then trying to shut down people who <laughs> dare encumber their freedoms? This is what I'm talking about. It's absolute madness. These are weaponized, insane Antifa people that are, that they're not going to to stand up for free speech and for freedoms of people who are clearly coming after them. So this is the former Federal Election Commission Chairwoman Ann Ravel. She says that political speech must be controlled on social media. And she called for regulations against fake news. So no Antifa people there. 
Now, during her tenure as the chairwoman of the FEC, Ravel previously called for right-leaning websites like the Drudge Report to be regulated, and she blamed hostile responses towards her proposals as misogyny. So it was misogyny that she would dare call for regulation of the internet, regulation of political speech. Uh, in 2015, the Democrats tried but failed to expand the FEC's regulatory powers to cover social media posts and other forms of political speech on the internet. These are not subject to the same scrutiny as political advertisements on old media. So that, of course, is because the Drudge Report and uh, Donald Trump's Twitter were so much more powerful than they were. And they said, wow, we've really got to do something about this because people aren't going to the mainstream media for their news and propaganda anymore. They're getting their information from alternative means. We need to shut that down. We need to regulate that political speech. No anti-fascists there trying to stop them, of course. So now another story coming out of InfoWars. Jamie White reports that the FBI has launched terrorist probes in all 50 states. The Department of Homeland Security has revealed uh, federal authorities have opened investigations into radical Islamic terrorists in all 50 states. They've warned the threat of terrorism has hit an all-time high. They say there have been at least 37 ISIS-linked plots to attack our country since 2013. Uh, the U.S. border remains wide open. Jihadists are working to exploit that national security weakness, and they plot attacks every single day. This is according to the DHS Secretary John Kelly. He said in the past year alone, there have been 36 homegrown terrorists in 18 states. Now, this is very uh, contrasting to what the former administration has told us because you will remember last December, Obama gave a speech to the military boasting that there were zero instances of domestic terrorist attacks, but he ignored the 11 homegrown terrorist attacks, including the Fort Hood shooter. <laughs> so he's saying this right to the military, but you'll recall, I think, uh, I think President Obama officially labeled that as a uh, um, workplace violence. So he could say, there was never any homegrown terror while I was president. So um, Kelly estimates that approximately 10,000 European citizens have joined the caliphate in Syria, in Iraq, thousands more from Africa and Asia. And so we're seeing these reports of uh, these people being given visas into countries like Venezuela, then they're coming up exploiting the open border, open southern border. Uh, he says that they have learned how to make IEDs, employ drones to drop ordnance, and acquired experience on the battlefield. And by all reports, they are bringing these skills back home with them. So in, in 2014, Judicial Watch reported that President Obama's uh, DHS gave more than 1,500 suspected terrorists asylum in the United States. Get this, they claimed that any crimes that those suspected terrorists committed were done so under duress. Oh, President Obama, he should be tried for treason. He was just trying to be such a kind, sweet soul, right, by letting these terrorists in our country. Um, homegrown terrorists like this uh, Fresno gunman who actually randomly killed three men today. If you, wa if you read it off the AP, they will tell you that he screamed, quote, God is great. However, that is a misquoted quote because the man screamed Allah Akbar, which, yeah, it's translated as God is great, but we don't need the AP to do the translation for us. Why the hell are they trying to cover up for these potential terrorists? Now, that they're saying that it, uh, it's still too early to know if these shootings were an act of terrorism, uh, but that these gunmen, 39-year-old Corey Ali Muhammad, first open fire on a passenger inside of a passing truck, um, just randomly shooting and killing three men, saying that he hated white people, screaming Allah Akbar. Um, so who knows if this man was just crazy and he snapped. Um, but again, for whatever reason, they're trying to cover up any ties might have with his radical Islamic ideology of him screaming Allah Akbar. They say he said Ali Akbar. So there you go. They're trying to play with the words a little bit. 
Well, stick around because coming up, we're going to talk about uh, some more ways that President Trump is trying to make good on those campaign promises. Of course, today he issued the, the order that uh, these criminal illegal immigrants are going to get the hell out or they are going to jail. So we'll have more on that as well as my interview uh, with award-winning investigative journalist Ildefonso Ortiz. InfoWars has partnered with Defender Body Armor to bring you a new state-of-the-art line of advanced, highly tested body armor from InfoWarsStore.com. Defender Body Armor is certified to protect against all handgun rounds and even armor-piercing FN 5.7 pistol rounds. The secret to Defender Body Armor is its proprietary processing technology that disperses more kinetic energy at a rate higher than any other traditional body armor. Using one of the strongest synthetic materials ever created, called Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, Defender Armor is also super compact and lightweight. There's a reason the Department of Defense chose Defender to manufacture their new line of advanced lightweight armor. It works. Defender body armor is made right here in America and has received the highest level ballistic resistance certification from an authorized NIJ ballistic laboratory. Defender body armor is now available through InfoWarsStore.com so you can defend yourself, your family, and finance the InfoWar against the globalists all at the same time. A total 360 win. You provided Alex with the caveman. Well, so we've been formulating this stuff for a while, and we've been getting these different flavors, and, you know, oh, I don't know about this one. Oh, you know, and uh, and so I've been taking that stuff, and, and I'm an old man. I'm 42. Uh, I work out five times a week, if not more. I hear you're and, okay in jujitsu. Oh, uh, no. That's I'm, what I'm, I hear. That's no, what I hear. No, no, I'm not. I'm terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. But the point is is that I have a lot of aches and shoulders and, you know, this weird joint stuff that I've had issues with for years. And uh, the, th this, this bone broth, the caveman bone broth, along with uh, our joint formula has just worked magic for me. And that's just, yeah. I, I, you know, that's just from, from my personal experience. Um, I think they're great products. And I think if anybody else has those issues that uh, you should definitely, you owe it to yourself to check it out. If I'm wrong, then hey man, write me a, write me a mean letter. But let me tell you, they work for me. And yeah, so, they work um, for me, too. I was Actually, we were talking about this earlier. Do and I play basketball, and I'm just now, like, for the first time in my life, I'm 27 now. After I play basketball, my knees are barking. Uh -oh. like it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, <laughs> well, and so, I, so but, the, but, the, but the bone broth and the joint formula, like you just said, you combine those two, I felt the difference immediately. I felt it immediately. Yeah. yeah, and it actually tastes good. Like, I'm really picky. And I will drink it. It tastes good to me. I love chocolate. So I really like the flavor of the caveman. So, you, I mean, if the blown, 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 uh, if the <laughs> bone, bone broth, broth. Bone <laughs> broth. <laughs> if the bone broth is really that gross, I mean, I would never have known because it tastes really good. And my favorite is the super female vitality. So, ladies, get yourself some super female vitality if you haven't already because it seriously, it just gets me going. I mean, I'll take a a whole bunch of that stuff before I go out Maybe and do get my... Maybe it for your wife then, too, <laughs> yeah, or girlfriend. right? <laughs> I, I go and take a bunch of it before I go do Man on the Street, and I just start running, zipping around, running right into the action. No fear, nothing, so... Well, that's a big primary <laughs> part about, uh, you know, find the globalists is making sure that we stay healthy and stay clear-eyed and, and stay honest and stay humble. Um, I hope that we do that here at InfoWars. Uh, we got a lot going on, and we're in the middle of the fight, so we really appreciate it when anybody supports us. Uh, either by uh, purchasing our products or you can even go onto our store and, uh, and, and donate. Um, we're, we're doing this by the skin of our teeth. I know it looks like we're in a, a, a billion dollar studio, but uh, Alex has never taken one cent of, uh, of, of borrowed money at all whatsoever. This is all money that's come from you, the listeners. So you've literally built this place, uh, you know, built this place with your compassion and built this place with the, the, the support that you've, you, you've sent us. So, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it because I know we wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't have a voice um, if it wasn't for you. So once again, we got to thank the listeners for their uh, for their steadfastness in supporting us. And uh, even even when we make mistakes, and even when we're not right, and even when we might go a little bit crazy, you guys stick with us, and I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's go back to uh, Lee. And Lee, you were talking about. What was going on? You said you got a story that's up at the populist.us, which is talking about how Ivanka Trump pa uh, partied uh, with inauguration before the inauguration with a bunch of never Trumpers and how these people work their way inside. I said, as we were looking at the election, you know, we have a situation where if you have a landslide election, uh, election for uh, somebody like Donald Trump, I believed that they would step aside and then try to 
take over the White House after the fact. And as we see these advisors that are being put into the White House, that appears to be what's going on. It's not Steve Bannon who is manipulating Trump. It is these, it's these right. new advisors like Gary Cohen who are working against the agenda that Trump had, that Bannon helped him to win on, and that, as Steve Bannon pointed out, if they deliver on that agenda, we will change the U.S. for the better for a generation. But if we don't, it's going to blow back in a very, very bad way uh, for freedom and for nationalism. Well, and I also want to just correct something I said last time. I was talking about the editor of Time. The editor of Time is uh, Nancy Gibbs. Forgive me. I said another name. The editor of Time is Nancy Gibbs. I, I just did that, David, because I wanted to show people an example of how people can make a mistake in journalism. That was the only reason. I, it was just a simple test. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I, nobody I, is perfect. We all understand that. And as you pointed out, it isn't you know fake or not making mistakes. Right. Nobody is perfect. Absolutely. But Nancy Gibbs is the editor of Time. Look, Steve Bannon said this. If you saw him at CPAC with Reince Priebus, he was asked a question. He, he was asked, do you think the media is going to get nicer to Donald Trump? And Steve said, I'm paraphrasing, but Steve basically said, if you think the establishment is going to give up their power and money, you're crazy. They're, that's not going to happen. That's right. And what we've seen it's an ongoing war. Steve Bannon said, of course, they're going to continue to fight. And we saw them focus on fight him first, quite frankly. Uh, as the New York Times article pointed out, nothing made Karl Rove's stomach not like the nickname they gave him, Bush's Brain. They know how to drive a wedge between people, and they have really focused on Bannon to drive that wedge against him so they can change the agenda, so they can change the ideology of the Trump administration that he won on, that he campaigned on with Steve. Now they're coming in with a completely different agenda. That's the thing that really concerns me, Lee. Well, it's the, it is exactly the establishment, globalist, internationalist, agenda that Donald Trump ran against. That's what's so disturbing about it. Let's just talk facts for a second here. And you've done a great job of pointing some of this stuff out, David, and I really appreciate it because this is a story the media has, did not want to touch for a while. Nobody was talking about Dina Powell, and you were one of the first, and I appreciate it. Uh, Dina Powell, Gary Cohn, let's talk about who they are. They're both Goldman Sachs people, right? Yes. Uh, they're both connected to Gary, Gary Cohn's a registered Democrat. Dina Powell is a Republican who worked in the Bush administration, whose ex-husband was a president at Teneo. Teneo's the company, <laughs> Doug Band's company, that's connected to the Clinton Foundation, uh, and who that Huma Abedin, who's Hillary Clinton's top assistant, worked for. By the way, who's Huma Abedin friends with? I wrote about this at Breitbart last year. Ivanka Trump. Yes. Who else is Ivanka Trump friends with? Chelsea Clinton. Now, uh, does does any of this mean is this just guilt by association is what does this mean here's what it means these are people who are marinating in the swamp okay yeah these are people who i mean dina powell uh, and is, let's call her dina habib powell nobody everybody is dropping the middle name because it points out her egyptian origins yes. but you know she was uh she was brought in and and, and last summer we had the Washington Post talking about Ivanka Trump, and they said, uh, she sounds like she's supporting Hillary Clinton. Because on all these women's issues, yes. she sounds exactly like Hillary Clinton. Well, who was advising her on the women's issues? It was Dina Habib Powell was advising her on the women's issues, and now she's on the National Security Council as they've pushed General Flynn out. That's And, and pushed Steve Bannon out. Yes, and, and as yes. They, as they brought up Steve Bannon. And right before, we dropped missiles on Syria for something that was not proven. Yes, I, I'm sorry that the the origin of that attack, the people who reported it are pro rebel. All the media came from pro rebel groups. Anybody who's paid any attention to Syria, and I went over to Lebanon in 2013 myself to do the investigation. Anybody who's paid any attention knows that these people lie, and that that who are the bad guys in this? Is it the Democrats like Barack Obama? Yes. Is it Republicans like John McCain? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. And so when you have people like, I refer to John McCain and Lindsey Graham as the ambiguously Republican duo. When you have people, <laughs> that's how I refer to them. And, right. uh, well, when you have people like John McCain, I'm not saying anything, David. Uh, <laughs> but when you have people like John McCain and Lindsey Graham suddenly coming out and praising Trump, 
Uh, I get a little nervous about that, I got to say. Or yeah. Elliot Abrams, who comes out and says, now he's finally president. And then the next thing you see in the press from Elliot Abrams is, the first thing Trump's got to do is get rid of Bannon. And for for Zakaria, yeah. they've been trying to look, and I, I write about this on the popular. I, by the way, for anybody trying to find, it, I got to point out, it's you got to put in the T H E populist. It's not populist. It's the H E populist, right? Yes. So if you if you go to the populist, I have an, another piece up there where I, I go through the timeline of how these people came into power. I go I go. I'm doing something a little different. I'm not doing stories exactly in some and that's cases. very important people need to understand I, I i was concerned about the direction this administration was headed when i started seeing the yeah. people who were being brought in it has an effect this isn't just inside politics folks this isn't just gossip or game of thrones it has real consequences welcome back to the alex jones show owen schroyer now joined in studio by roger stone an honor to be joined by roger and you've got a piece that's about to be it actually might be up on infowars.com right now breaking down the latest on mike pompeo He's for WikiLeaks. He's anti-WikiLeaks. He's spinning himself in a circle, Roger. This is uh, deeply disappointing to me, uh, only because <clears throat> the Central Intelligence Agency and the vaunted 17 agencies we keep hearing about have systematically leaked in an attempt to destabilize the president, delig first delegitimize his election, uh, and then destabilize him. Uh, and it's clear that the place needs reform. They need to wipe out the whole second and third levels uh, who are continue to be Obama appointees. Instead, Mike Pompeo seems to be buying the BS narrative of the careerists, the neocons at the Central Intelligence Agency. And he blurted out last Friday that WikiLeaks is a Russian asset. So, in all, to be completely reasonable, I would give Mr. Pompeo a reasonable amount of time, say five days, to either produce proof of this outrageous claim or resign, because that's not consistent with Donald Trump's view. Donald Trump said, and I quote, I love WikiLeaks. Uh, there's no evidence whatsoever uh, of, uh, of uh, Julian Assange being an asset for the Russian state. Uh, the intelligence services keep repeating this because they need it to be true. If it's not true, well, then ultimately, and there is no Russian collusion, we're going to learn that the president was under surveillance or his aides were under surveillance and he was caught up by it at a minimum for strictly political reasons. That's Watergate times 10. That's spying on the Republican nominee for president. Uh, Mr. Pompeo should know better. It's clear to me that the agency is going to run him. He cannot run the agency. I frankly think he ought to resign. You know, and it's stories like this that remind me about how there's a divide tactic being worked by the deep state, by the media, the Democrats, the globalists, all working in collusion to try to divide Trump's base and defeat him in 2020. I think that that's part of this agenda. And it's almost amazing, you know, you say that Pompeo needs to produce the evidence that he claims that WikiLeaks is a Russian asset. He would have that ability. So he should be able to, within five days, actually prove that statement true. If not, I would assume it's false. And what would you think about this? It, it appears to me that at this point in time that the drain, the swamp, it's time for that to become more than just rhetoric. He needs to really drain this swamp immediately. Well, I guess I would... Um I would make two points. One, look at the actual quote from the FBI director, Mr. Comey, in front of the House Intelligence Committee. When he's asked, have you been able to ascertain, ascertain with certainty that uh, WikiLeaks uh, is a Russian operation? He says, well, it is our assessment that they've used some kind of cutout. is the fungus? Why is the mold? Why is the yeast taking over? What is going on? What has changed? Dr. Group, the new product will sell out definitely in days. You've been testing it for almost a decade. You've got rave reviews from your 
patients who've been taking it privately here at clinics. Myco ZX supports normal fungal and yeast balance proprietary blend of herbs and enzymes made with high quality ingredients. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. We also have free shipping, orders $50 or more, and 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. Additionally, on top of that, and then you fund an organization dedicated to the truth and get something you and your family absolutely need. But you should consult your healthcare provider. This is not a game. This is not a joke. Especially if you have really big uh, yeast levels or fungus in your body. Uh, you know, there can be some responses to this as you're flushing it. But uh, why is this product so powerful? What does it do? So we've been doing research just like you have on what's currently going on. Obviously, we stay ahead of the game because our job is to protect and address the root cause of the problem, which is why I've been... Now, we want stuff for our own kids. Hey, well, we've been... This is why we've addressed the president, you know, let's address the root cause of America's health problems. But getting back to fungus, it's becoming an increasing epidemic that's only getting worse. killing I've bats been, everywhere, other animals, uh, squirrels uh, are know, dying. Funguses were used as bioweapons. So uh, why is it suddenly field. killing so many mammals? Yeah, fungus is a growing epidemic, and I've been testing this formula and, and making changes to this formula for over 10 years. I've had nobody... Here's the thing, Alex. When you go to the doctor with a list of symptoms, you, there, you can look at fung symptoms of fungus overgrowth in the body it's going to show you're going to pull up over a hundred symptoms everything from brain fog lack of energy insomnia headaches bowel problems joint pain it's, it's joint pain it's linked to crohn's disease infertility now. what about the obesity epidemic i know they test people that are really obese and, and like they're they're just colonized by fungus Le yeast overgrowth i have a study right here by jacob tiedelbaum at the fibromyalgia and fatigue center in dallas yeast overgrowth is linked to an average weight gain of 32 and a half pounds what doctor by the way folks look i'm not bragging we game changed the presidency we game changed the new world order globalism is falling because of you you are the info war we listen this is religious for me okay i do not bring you something unless i absolutely believe in it and if we were reigned with a billion dollars i would turn 99 percent of it against the enemy i want to defeat them i'm ready to give my life everybody knows that against the enemy please we only have a limited supply of this I want to get your reviews. I want to hear what you have to say. For me, it's been incredible. Myco ZX, antifungal, uh, antifungus, uh, anti yeast. Get it today. Limited run. It'll be months till we get more. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com. Myco ZX feels great with the bomb defense. Infowarslife.com or AAA 2533139. And you can't support an organization that isn't fighting harder. Look at the response we're getting. We we're changing the world together. You are the Infowar. God bless you all. Let's go to Devon in Florida. Devon in Florida, you're on the air. Great. Hey, thank you so much. Listen, I have bought your product, and I got to say they're amazing. Thank Anyone you. who's on the fence, buy it, because I've, I've got Caveman, Superman Vitality, Secret 12, Vitamin Mineral Fusion. I've got the body armor. Wow, thank you. Wow. You're the type of listener that makes it all possible. Which nutraceutical so, does you like best? I really like the, the Vitamin Mineral Fusion, to be honest. That's it's amazing. Really incredible. I drank it in the morning, and I swear to you, I felt incredible. Like, I haven't felt weak. My morning was fantastic, and I, and I love you guys. I love the info. Wars crew, and I just want to, yeah, I want to, I want to take this opportunity to tell anybody out there who's on the fence, just buy it. You will love it. I'm telling you, I've never bought a bad product. What you find in our news is the same thing you find in our products at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a win-win, InfoWarsLife.com. But I will tell you, we've gotten tremendous criminals out of this country. And I'm talking about illegal immigrants that were here that caused tremendous crime, that have murdered people, raped people, horrible things have happened. They're getting the hell out or they're going to prison. And so many towns and cities are thanking me. Well, that was President Trump taking a very tough stance, uh, completely opposite of his predecessor, former President Obama, who seemed to do everything he could to let people know that the borders were wide open and we will overlook your illegal immigrant status. President Trump, this is one thing that many of us are not shocked. We actually voted him in to take a tougher stance on illegal immigration, and that's already happening. We're seeing uh, ICE arrests up, deportations are up, and so many people out there seem to be shocked that this is newsworthy. We've got uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano saying 
this shouldn't be newsworthy that the government is finally enforcing the immigration laws. He said that the only thing that's really newsworthy about it is because of the fact the government is so profoundly different from the previous government. And this is this is uh, the Trump administration. They're actually enforcing the rules that are already on the books. This shouldn't come as a shock. But as we can see, the media is just really reporting about all of these ICE arrests and all these deportations um, when they haven't even surpassed what President Obama was capable of during his administration. But they're really trying to paint Trump as just this evildoer, this uh, bully, who's actually now just trying to say, look, we're taking a tough stance and we are getting out these criminals who have come to our country and they're caught committing crimes. And um, you can listen to Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly, who is taking a really tough stance when President Trump says he's going to let him handle it. He's doing a good job. He'll let him take care of it. What he says, uh, he's designated two types of illegal immigrants. Either they committed a crime here and they went to jail or they committed a crime and they didn't yet go to jail. So that's how he sees people who are here illegally. Maybe they haven't committed a crime, but being here illegally was the first crime that's already been committed. Uh, he says both of these things can can trigger automatic deportations. So this is why we're actually seeing the government uh, taking a very tough stance, but these are laws that are already on the books. People are saying that Trump's new rules are deporting everybody, and this could actually swamp already backlogged immigration courts. Um, so this is USA Today reporting about how immigration judges uh, will breeze through more than 20 juvenile cases a day warning those in the packed courtroom to show up at their next hearing or risk deportation. So now we see these um, authorities are actually being given back the power that was taken away from them from the prior administration. And now they're saying, look, we're not going to take it easy on you. If you guys are here illegally, if you're here to commit crime, you are going to get out. So today, 301 judges will hear immigration cases in 58 courts across the United States. They're saying that this is uh, th that there's many backlog cases have soared in recent years from uh, 236,000 plus in 2010 to about 508,000 this year alone, 1,700 outstanding cases per judge. So that's what they're dealing with, this backlog, because a lot of people were wait holding off. Uh, they wouldn't show up, and then they didn't face deportation. And they were also kind of waiting to see who the next president was and if that president would be as lenient as President Obama. But now that Trump is in, a lot of people are saying that they're seeing uh, the amount of illegal immigration decrease. People aren't coming here. And in fact, we can see that that is indeed true because uh, Reuters is reporting that asylum applications in Mexico are surging after Trump won the election. So this is the p number of people applying for asylum in Mexico soared by more than 150 percent. So these are Central, uh, Central American migrants and other people who are seeking to stay in Mexico rather than take their chances and go on to the United States. They're saying, we're not even going to try. We just hope to apply for asylum. We'll stay here in Mexico. Um, so this is, this is incredible. And they're also reporting how the number of detentions along the southwestern U.S. border has fallen about 4 percent over this five-month period because... T Trump is taking a very tough immigration proposals, sending a chilling message throughout these communities, these people that would dare come. And um, as David Knight and others have continually pointed out, we need to cut off the source of why people are coming first. They know, well, we might as well not even risk it because we're definitely going to get deported. But we also need to stop making it so attractive per for people to take that risk to come here illegally because the welfare benefits that they can get, they can get by coming here are just worth the risk to them. But now we have some some more kind of startling news coming out of Breitbart. Um, officials are actually defying Trump's promises. They are saying 40 miles of the border has been ordered to be unpatrolled. Now, this is 40 miles um, in uh, Montana. So this is the northern border. And this is a border that has historically been patrolled by the same border agents who are now being told to just stop patrolling at this line. These 40 miles are to be left open. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, Breitbart got an exclusive interview with one of these agents who said, you know, this it's really confusing and it seems as if there is some sort of collusion um, with these 
officials, government officials or these border agents or someone there who is helping and allowing certain things to pass through the border. We don't know. Is it drugs? Is it people? Uh, We're not sure what's going on there, but it's definitely very odd. And they're saying that people are going to need to be reassigned. Um, further investigation into what the heck is going on. Why would you just need this particular 40 miles of the Montana border? Keep that open. We need that open because a lot of people forget that the northern border is just as dangerous as the southern border. In fact, it's a lot easier, I'm told uh, by the reporters there at Breitbart, that it's much easier to bring drugs and humans and others through the northern border. And that's why we're seeing uh, the northeastern United States being infiltrated by MS-13 gangs and others. And this is what uh, President Trump is saying. They're focusing on getting these bad hombres out. Um, I'm going to be speaking with Ildefonso Ortiz coming up later in the show. Um, he's working with Breitbart, Texas. They're covering the Cartel Chronicles, doing some very brave reporting there, uh, but really urging people to speak out while they can and to take heed and to notice what's going on in your communities with these gang members with these people who are here illegally while you still can speak out about it because you look no further than mexico if you want to see the type of corruption and collusion that goes on when you live in a country that doesn't abide by the rule of law uh they the, one of their stories that they reported on the 15th another fugitive mexican gover- governor faces new charges in the u.s none in mexico um and so this is this is kind of the story is that mexico is working They're just working uh, so cooperatively with the United States. They're such our great allies. They're such good guys. Meanwhile, when they know that the U.S. is wanting uh, to file charges against people who have committed crime, uh, there are uh, drug trafficking, other crimes like that, the the Mexico is protecting these people and giving them asylum, basically, not sending them back to the U.S. Um, But we also are seeing a lot of journalists who are exposing these cartel government connections being murdered. Four so far this year alone, um, since just March 2nd. And these are four journalists. The first two were directors of news outlets in Veracruz and Guerrero. These are two states where various cartels have surpassed the Mexican government's abilities to restore peace. And uh, corrupt politicians there are continuing to work with these uh, cartels as their surrogates. They're protecting them. Uh, Another journalist, Miroslava Breach, Uh, had long been uh, an investigative reporter in the border state of Chihuahua. She was gunned down by a team of cartel assassins. Uh, She was returning from dropping off her children at school. The uh, The gunman left a message of the crime scene claiming that her fate was due to her having a big mouth. And one of the big stories that Breach uh, had reported on prior to her death was the collusion uh, between Mexico's PRI party and the leader of the La Linea faction of the Juarez cartel. Uh, What she discovered and reported on was the fact that the mother-in-law of the cartel boss was trying to get (laughs) elected into the the political office there And so she exposed this and uh, she was murdered. So the drug boss that's in question there, um, L80, as he's known, L80 Quintana, is wanted by the FBI, but he lives happily in Mexico. And so this is the type of thing that we're seeing again and again. Uh, The fourth journalist murdered was um, Maxim... Maximino Rodriguez, he was a crime beat reporter from the Baja Peninsula, also gunned down while parking at a shopping mall with his wife. So gunned down right in front of his family. Uh, So this is the type of stuff that's going on in Mexico. When President Trump talks about bad hombres, the people that he's getting out, it's these types of people. This is this is this is what the country looks like, where they're kind of importing that same type of crime into our countries. And we need to stop that now while we still have a chance. Alex Jones here with a very important news update to anybody out there that wants to be prepared. But it goes beyond being prepared. Our bodies absolutely must have the good halogen iodine or we will die. And you look at all of the thyroid problems and all the people that don't have energy and that have all sorts of hormone problems. And from my research and a lot of just mainline research, it leads back to iodine over and over and over again. It's as important as vitamin C. If you don't get iodine, you die. But most people are just efficient, so they're low energy, they're sick, 
You gotta have iodine in your body so that your body can produce the hormones you need. It is the base to so many things. And since I got into iodine four years ago, we've helped change the entire paradigm by developing and bringing to the public deep earth crystals from seven to 12,000 feet of the purest iodine available. Other iodine comes from the ocean or from other byproducts of chemical facilities and is tainted. It's, 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 it's bound, it's, it's not absorbable. I tried it. And I had incredible effects even with dirty iodine because the body needs it. When you don't have iodine, it absorbs the chlorine, the fluoride, and all these other bad halogens. Do yourself and your family a favor and check out the importance of iodine for yourself. I think you're going to be blown away. And whatever you do, support the broadcast and get a bottle of Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. Also, consult your physician because if you've been deficient in it or have other issues, it can have some dramatic effects. As for me and most folks I talk to, it's been a game changer in the positive column. But still, consult your physician because iodine is no joke. It's a key building block of the body. And if you haven't had it for a long time and suddenly have it, some folks say they've experienced things like... Uh, a, a detoxing effect and things like that. You've got to have vitamin C. You've got to have iodine to live. You've got to have water to live. Iodine is key. You must have it. But consult your physician first before you get powerful Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2 at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free. We can answer your questions. 888 253 3139. Since March 2nd, four journalists have been murdered in Mexico. Now, crimes against journalists there in Mexico will typically go unpunished because the individuals behind the crimes are either cartel members, they could be political power players, sometimes both, working in collusion. Now, my guest today is an award-winning investigative journalist with Breitbart, Texas, Ildefonso Ortiz. He helped to co-found the Cartel Chronicles Project with Brandon Darby and Stephen K. Bannon there at Breitbart News, um, working for Breitbart, Texas. So they do incredibly brave reporting there on the border and immigration issues, as well as daring to give a voice to the people of Mexico who are silenced um, by these cartel members who will just chop off the heads of journalists in some towns to enforce that silence. Mr. Ortiz, thank you so much for joining the show today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Now, just today, uh, President Trump told Fox News that the criminal illegal immigrants are getting the hell out or they are going to prison. And I think it's so important for people to understand uh, how big of an issue this is. And we really need to speak out about the, uh, the gangs that are infiltrating these smaller cities. But while we have the chance, because if anyone really wants to know what's going on, just take a look at what's going on in Mexico to see what happens if you're uh, in a country that doesn't go by the rule of law or where your government officials are colluding with these gangs. Um, so talk to us about this latest string of crimes against journalists and what that represents. Absolutely. So in Mexico, we have uh, the, the cartels are basically... Uh, colluding with the government, and that's been going on for years. The problem is that if you start reporting against the government or the cartels, you become a target. Just this year, we have had four reporters that have been murdered for their reporting, for exposing those links between the cartels and the government. Last year, we had 14 reporters that were murdered. It's a trend. It's a very scary trend that continues to cre creep up, making Mexico one of the most dangerous places for, for journalists. The problem is that all these murders continue to take place, but there are no consequences. The, the people behind those murders are never caught, are never prosecuted. And these are just the murders. We're not talking about the assaults, the threats. The There's uh, just south of us in, in Mexico, in Reynosa, one of the local newspapers basically was uh, continues to be attacked by gunfire on a regular basis. So that's the kind of uh, violence that we see down here where cartels are out of control and they actually have set up an alternate form of government. They don't answer to anybody. And that's the, that's how that's what we see in Mexico. Right. And I know that you guys have done extensive coverage there at the Cartel Chronicles. You actually have uh, people submit articles anonymously to protect themselves, but they're just happy to have an outlet where they could actually get these stories out because there are journalists there are silenced with violence and threats of violence. Um, I know when I was just going through school and we were reporting on that, they would um, behead people who were daring to go into the news business and then leave their heads right there at the doorstep of the news agencies. It's just kind of a, a warning of, hey, you're gonna speak out about us? You know, if there's some things that we could do to take care of, of you. 
Talk to us a little bit about just some of the implications of seeing these gangs kind of infiltrating some towns here in the United States and sort of what people need to be aware of as far as speaking out or speaking up. Well, primarily what people need to be aware of is that nothing crosses that border, nothing crosses that fence or that river without the cartels give, uh, having a say so. So whether it's drugs, guns, cash, illegal immigrants, uh, poultry, uh, meat products, anything that's crossed illegally through, uh, other than through the international ports of entry, the cartels have a say so, and they actually have absolute control over what crosses through those areas. The problem is that the cartels are so powerful in Mexico that they have been trickling into the U.S. Down here, for example, in South Texas, we have had a long string of public officials, law enforcement officials that have been colluding with the cartels. They've been, over time, they've been getting caught, but we've had uh, various uh, sheriffs down here, uh, law enforcement officials, uh, other individuals, all uh, either taking money from the cartels, stealing drugs, pushing drugs, but basically everything revolving around the drug trafficking business. And sadly, that's a trend that has not slowed down and will likely continue to spike. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you've got an article out about a cartel-linked fugitive Mexican governor who continues to be on the run, now facing charges here in the U.S., but none in Mexico. Yeah, so this is one of the very uh, scary part issues with Mexico. Uh, while government officials try to, you know, say how we're how great Mexico is to us and how great we're with Mexico, they're forgetting that government officials from the at the mayor, mayor level all the way to the governor level or even higher have been working with the cartels. We have two fugitive governors from the state of Tamaulipas, just south of Texas. We have uh, another governor in Veracruz and one in Chihuahua, all those those four guys are fugitives of the, uh, some of them from the U.S. Department of Justice, others from other law enforcement agencies. So you have all these governors that made money by working with the cartels. And Mexico didn't investigate these individuals. In the case of two of the governors from Tamaulipas, it was the U.S. Department of Justice that caught them because they were laundering their money in the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's how uh, authorities were able to prosecute them. But Actually, two, those two governors were actually getting protection from Mexican authorities while they're being fugitives of the U.S. And that's the scary part where you have government officials protecting cartel fugitives in Mexico mm -hmm. while at the same time trying to be friendly with the U.S. Right. And you all have done extensive reporting on this government collusion with the cartels in Mexico. But now there's a, a the latest article you've got out. Um, is uh, how officials are defying Trump's promises, 40 miles of border ordered unpatrolled. What does that mean? I know you guys have got some exclusive interviews there. So give us uh, what's going on there. Well, basically, you have this area in the Harp sector where there's uh, about 60 miles of, of, of border and uh, agents are being told to only stay in one, one area, not to patrol the entire thing. They're not saying why, and that is the scary part. Why would you limit somebody from, from patrolling an entire sector and just limiting them to a, to a particular area? You know, as somebody who's uh, been working this border for more than 10 years, I can tell you, that points to something coming and, and cr or crossing through that border that should not be crossing. That tends to be generally what we're speaking about. Uh, I mean, there, there's really no other reason why they would limit that the, the you know the patrolling of law enforcement in key areas of the border right 40 miles of the montana border open and unpatrolled and so this was an area that had previously been patrolled by the agents that are there but now they're being told to just stay in this particular area there isn't any anyone else that's been assigned to that area it's just being uh left open as it was historically patrolled so this is very interesting because a lot of people are focused on the southern border but there's other borders that we have to be worried about as well. Um, now, uh, go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, if, if, you know, um, if you look at, the, I mean, everybody focuses on the southern border, but the northern border is a very scary border as well. That is where you're seeing, uh, for example, uh, with uh, various drugs, our drugs that are not, seen, that, that are, it's easier for them to move them through the Canadian border down here, particularly in the cases of, of hydro and other types of drugs. It's easier for them to produce them up north or to get them 
it's for the cartels to get them to Canada and then bring them south, particularly to those uh, cities that are on the northern border, uh, instead of having to go all the way through the Mexico and all the way through the U.S. And that's where it gets very uh, scary as to what is crossing through those key areas. Right. Yeah. Well, we just got about a minute left, and I want you to explain, I mean, I'm sure, do you ever worry about your own safety, and why would you dare put yourself out there like this? Somebody has to do something. Uh, Brendan and I, Brendan Darby and I, my partner in all this, we've been uh, trying to bring a voice to the voiceless. In Mexico, the journalists, they're silenced. They, they're not able to report what's going on. We try to bring them a voice. We try to bring a voice to the agents. We try to bring a voice to the people that are trying to fight the fight but are being silenced by organized crime, by government officials, people that don't want this truth to be known. And our job is to basically give them an outlet. We're here, we're listening, and we're going to amplify your voice. I'm going to put it out there so that people can know what is really going on in these areas. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your brave reporting. People can find your work at Breitbart, Texas. Uh, you can find it there by clicking on the Cartel Chronicles. You can see those very important stories. And like we always say, share the articles far and wide. Get this information out there. Support the president who's trying to let everyone know about what we're going, what we have going on here. Thank you so much, Ildefonso. Thank you. My pleasure. And that's going to do it for the show tonight. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you here again tomorrow at 7. I am very proud to announce the introduction of the highest quality InfoWars Biome Defense Probiotic. We wanted to come out with the largest spectrum of high quality known probiotics that have been proven to improve overall digestion and health and detoxification in the body. Biome Defense is an exclusive blend of 50 billion live and active cultures from over 23 different probiotic strains that are known to support digestion and intestinal function. Our researchers are confident that we have been able to develop what will be the leading probiotic on the market. Secure your Biome Defense in ultra strength or regular strength at InfoWarsLife.com today and get started supporting your digestive system naturally. We've been testing this formula for years, but this is the limited first run to the public, so please take advantage of it today. Support your own health and support the InfoWar.